still ahead. She was raised in the ghetto, molested by an uncle, and saw gunshot victims on a regular basis. But her power, determination, and faith pulled her through. Now Jolanda Jones is working to light a flame in the lives of other disadvantaged children. Her story is next. Her uncle molested her. Her father killed himself. Her brother was murdered. Her mother was tough and unsupportive, and her husband was abusive. But Jolanda Jones refused to let her environment define her. My parents were young when they had me. We grew up in a rent house right here in Third Ward. We lived behind my grandmother Deer's house. I had an aunt who was a prostitute and uncles in prison. There used to be a building here, and this is where my father killed himself. And I was in the room when he did it. I heard gunfire and saw gunshot victims where we lived. Many times we had to go down the street to get water from the gas station. And oftentimes my mother had to borrow money just to buy food. Being the oldest, I was always left with the responsibility of taking care of my four brothers and sisters. Everyone around us was poor. It wasn't until we moved to A-Leaf when I was in the eighth grade that I realized we were among the have-nots. Jolanda is with me this morning, and society oftentimes writes off a child who's gone through what you've gone through. But you rose above it all. How? Faith. Talking a lot to my grandmother. That's about it. Just always sort of believing in myself. And, and if I didn't, then understanding that she believed in me. Yeah. So just sort of getting through stuff. You also defy the thought that if you come from a poor neighborhood, you can't accomplish great things. From that neighborhood, you grew up to be and to do. I'm a lawyer and I'm a consultant. Um, fly all over the country and speak to kids and try to teach them how to overcome obstacles and be successful. So that's probably my greatest happiness, my greatest joy. Oftentimes that's all a child needs is this one person, at least one person in their life that believes in them. And you say a lot of that came from your grandmother who was with us this morning. Good morning, grandmother dear. Good morning. As she is referred to. Um, you saw something special in Jolanda when she was a little girl. What was that? Well, she was a very obedient child. I didn't ever have any problems with her. And she never... Now, wait a minute, Jolanda's laughing. She's going, oh, oh really? <laughs> she listened. But she was never satisfied with what she had done. She, was all, she always felt like she could do better and do more. And what she has accomplished, she did that on her own. Are you surprised at what she's accomplished? No, I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm just thankful to God that she realized that she had a gift, and she's using it to the best of her knowledge. Yeah. Gwendolyn is your mom, and you are here this morning, and I want to say thank you. It takes a lot of guts for a parent to come on a live TV show and say, you know what, I did mess up when raising my child. I did make a few mistakes. But you say that's because you didn't know any better. True. I was young when I had Yolanda, and not knowing how to raise a child, I was only doing what emulating my parents, trying not to cause what I did cause. Yeah. And as I've gotten older, I have to admit that I made mistakes. And by admitting that you made mistakes, that allows Jolanda to heal. There are a lot of kids out there who haven't healed because the parents haven't talked to them about it, and there has been no dialogue and therefore no resolution. But in a way, even though you said your mom was tough and, and unsupportive uh, with what you're going through, um, it was a, a blessing, a blessing in disguise because it taught you how to, to raise... To be a great mother. Yeah. I think my son would tell you I'm the best mommy in the universe. Well, let's let him tell us. Giovanni, hi there. Hi. What's so cool about your mom? She takes me places and she's supportive. And... She taught me a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and you said the reason why you were able to do that because you knew to not do what your mom did. You kind of did the opposite. Right. There were a lot of things that were very hurtful to me. I um, am in the process of writing a book, and it's tentatively called Defining Moments. And, and the book is 
quasi-autobiographical and self-help sort of teaching people. I went through this. This is how it affected me, and this is how I overcame it, and hopefully it will help you overcome it. And so I had these problems wondering how do I write a, an autobiographical book about myself and not talk about my relationship with my mother. And I didn't want anyone to think that I hate my mother because I don't. And so we talked about it. We had a defining moment uh, probably about a month ago. Where we just laid everything on the table. And I was really happy after that because before that I don't think that I, well, I was, I'm not going to say I was stagnant, but it certainly affected me that my mother and I, I mean, that she wouldn't acknowledge that she did some things that she probably shouldn't have done. But again, on the reverse of that, I think that you can learn positive things from negative situations. And, yeah. and I believe having my mother has made me a great mother. As my son said, I'm super supportive of him. I tell him I love him 10 or 15 times a day. I tell him I'm so thankful God gave you to me. So, and I, I coach him. Yeah. I show up at his school. I help him with his homework. And so I do all the things that I want it for me. What you're saying is that you didn't just have a child, you're a parent. Exactly. <laughs> okay. But Jolanda, going back, you said faith is what you got you through, and, and everyone's faith is shaken at some point in time, and, and you didn't go through just a few things. You went through a lot of stuff. Was there ever a time when you thought that you might not make it, you might not be able to um, rise to the occasion that you wanted to rise to? As a child, certainly because my father killed himself, uh, and I was with him when he did it, that sort of profoundly affects you. That's really an understatement. But, yeah. um, and so certainly suicide was thought about a lot by me. And when I was pregnant with my son, because of some of the things that I was going through, I, I thought about it. And um, then I said, I would never do to my son what my father did to me. So, yeah. but again, at some point, I really got stronger in God, or as strong as I've been, and just sort of said, you know, he's not going to give me more than I can handle. You mentioned your father, how that was a profound experience in your life. You have something here that is kind of um, a reminder. But my grandmother saved this for me. She gave it to me probably about six months ago. It's the shirt she had on the night my father killed himself. She was wearing, of course, she washed the blood out. But, and so this is my first official family heirloom. So it's the, yes. the but always a reminder that as long yes. as you are alive, you can change your circumstances. Certainly. All right. Certainly. And I would like to just recognize Fleming Middle School. They're here. I, I consult with them, and they were nice enough to come. And they're lucky enough to have somebody like you consulting with them. So. Well, thank you very much.